Hello people, this is Katya, the vegan powerlifter. I'm about to miss like this awesome morning light. You see, it's already starting to get super bright. Ah, oh, so bright. Um, anyways, today we're going to be talking about the ways fitness industry manipulates us to spend more money on useless stuff by using half truths and some real science uh, that they merge with half lies. So let's dive into it. Hit a like and subscribe and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, number one thing, number one half-truth and half-lie that they tell us is we need supplements. Everybody needs supplements to get... <coughs> <coughs> What's up? <laughs> to get results. And true, you do need to take your multivitamin, you do need to take whatever other vitamins you are lacking. So if you've done blood work, you might notice that, okay, you're lacking for example, vitamin D or vitamin B12, like me. So I take those after I do some, some lab tests. Without that, you kind of don't know what you need. And if you just walk into a supplement store, of course, they're going to find like a million products that you are not progressing without. Like that's the missing link in your, you know, nutrition and training routine and your whole other set of routines. Of course, you need to buy this bottle and this bottle and this bottle and take those things and uh you're gonna see results i i have seen this when i used to work in commercial construction uh i saw this a lot when we had like the spring fitness challenge when the folks would come from a supplement store from like a gym to help us build workouts they would come from a supplement store and be like hey by the way here's a discount if you need any like uh, recommendations, let us know. So people go there to talk to them and to do a DEXA scan. They, they, they would give us a free DEXA scan. And of course, people who don't know much about training would come out, you know, with a bundle of stuff. And yeah, protein is fine. Creatine is fine. Good stuff. Protein is basically food. It's not, I wouldn't even consider it supplement. Protein is food. Okay. And creatine is just fine. Got it. Even if you're not lifting, it helps uh, your brain function, it's the most researched supplement ever, it does not have side effects. But other stuff, like BCAAs and L-carnitine and all of the fat burners and pre-workouts and post-workouts and inter-workouts, yeah, the stuff is all cool and fine, but that may attribute to like 1% to 3% of your whole result. And of course, the supplement stores are not going to make as much money if they say, you're fine. You're going to be just okay with um, a relatively healthy diet and a good training routine. You're good, right? They're, they're not selling you anything. Whoopsies. With that, they're not making much money. So they have to convince you that you are missing those supplements. And that is going to make your life so much easier and make you get to the results like twice or three times as fast. Not true. Okay, next one. And probably my least favorite word in the fitness industry is toning. I just want to tone. I don't really want to get big. You see this on labels. You hear this from every other gym girl that she just wants to tone. She doesn't really want to gain muscle. But the thing is, muscles are dumb. They can only get bigger and smaller. They can't tone. That, that's not something that it does. If the muscle has pump, right? If I'm like doing delt raises and then my delts are pumped with blood and with oxygen, okay, that's a pump. You're going to get it while you're actually training the thing in the gym and you're going to lose that pump in, I don't know, half an hour, an hour. Yeah. And if you work out a lot, I hear this from PTs also. PTs actually have the term muscle tone and that is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the PT term and the way they use it to work with their clients and to write their therapy programs. That is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about the way people use the word tone to mean bigger muscles, smaller fat percentage. So the muscles are more visible because that's literally all it comes to. So please stop using the word toning and realize that you can't tone the stomach or the, the flab on your arms. Everybody wants to get rid of this flab, but I remember uh, one of my teammates, she was doing an Instagram post of like, oh, oh my gosh, flab, right? Flab. Well, if you 
flex it, you see how there's no more flab? Like this is muscle. Yes, your muscle wiggles. That's okay. It doesn't mean it doesn't have muscle tone. That doesn't mean it's too big or too small or too much fat. No, BS. Complete bullshit. So you see all of the products that help you tone a certain body part or do spot reduction all of the damn time. And I am so sick of it. Your body decides where to put fat, where to store it based on your genetics. So you can thank your mom and your papa for the fact that you gain fat in the booty or in the stomach or in the back or I don't know, in the triple chin. You can't decide that. You can only surgically remove fat from a certain area. If you put some cream on that area, if you put a little sweat belt or a sweat sleeve or a sweat shirt, or if you put some device that's going to like, I don't know, do some electrical things, that is not going to help you spot reduce fat in just that area. Spot reduction is not a thing. If you see anything from like a physical device to a supplement to a workout program that is promising that you're going to tone a certain area, that's a waste of money. You know that that's a waste of money. That does not happen. You see the sun starts creeping up. Oh man. I'm going to try to close the curtain, but it's not going to help much. Anyways, uh, by the end of the video, I'm all just going to be one big white blob. <laughs> the number three thing that I wanted to talk with you guys about, where's my script, is extreme dieting. You see the flashy results of like, oh my gosh, I lost 20 pounds in a month or in a few days. I did this detox. I did this keto diet. And I want for you to remember a couple of things here before we pick this apart. Number one is extreme dieting can mess with your hormones, with your metabolism. It slows it down, but don't be scared of it. It's not like your metabolism slows down once and then like it's messed up forever. No, your metabolism slows a little bit if you eat little, move little, right? Your metabolism and your, how you feel is going to be better off when you move more and when you train more and eat more, right? If you look at any competitive athlete, that's what we do. If you look at any person who is just trying to lose weight and not get super muscular, they just eat less and they like end up moving around less because <clears throat> their body is trying to preserve energy. So yeah, they do end up worse looking with worse health and worse performance clearly because they move less. Um, but when it comes to losing a lot of weight, that approach is viable, I guess. You don't have to work out too, too much. You can have deficit from nutrition too. That's fine. But the fat burn has a limit. Your body can only oxidize that much fat within a certain time. So I would usually say like 1% of your body weight per week you can lose in fat maximum if you are a normal BMI, if you're not a morbidly obese person. If you're an obese person, then you can lose a lot more. So usually when you see those flashy results of folks who are like just going from, I don't know, 300 pounds to 200 pounds to like normal BMI and then almost like a bodybuilder looking, they never tell you if those people are taking performance enhancing drugs, which help re retain muscle and lose body fat. Uh, those results look way cooler if the person used to be super huge and then they became become like super shredded or super athletic looking like, oh my gosh. But usually that's like a life changing scenario that they're going through and they're putting everything into this transformation. An average person like me, for example, I'm 75 kilos. If I decide to lose like five or 10 kilos, you won't super notice that on me and that won't look very impressive. So if I have like the majority of my clients who want to lose a little bit usually are like, I don't know, below 200 pounds. And if they lose a little bit of weight, like, yeah, they will lose 10, 20 pounds. And for an, like a girl, my height, five, six, five, seven, 10 pounds is not going to be super visible 20 pounds. Probably if she's starting to get shredded, probably, but if you go on my website, totalbodylab.com or veganpowerlifter.com, you see that the folks, they just kind of look normal and they're happy and healthier that they've lost a little bit of weight, but it doesn't look super flashy unless you're getting so lean and shredded, you're getting for a bodybuilding 
competition. I mainly train powerlifters, so I don't attempt for those results that are like, you look at the person, you're like, whoa, on a picture. But in real life, you're looking at them and you're like, whoa, you're about to die. Can you please eat something? So yeah. Also for keto diets and detoxes, I do want you to remember this. Detox is not a thing. You have a liver for that. We've talked about this many times on the channel. Regarding keto, carbs retain water. Keto basically cuts out as many carbs as, as possible. So remember that you are losing water weight, not just body fat. And that is why the weight loss appears to be bigger, like twice as big as it normally is. You start eating normally, get off your keto diet, you start eating carbs again, you get some of that weight back. But it's not fat, it is water. And your muscles are 80% water. They need water to be full and function optimally. Dehydrating yourself is not the same as fat loss. So I don't like when people are trying to only focus on the weight on the scale and forget that some of that weight they actually need to be healthy. You need your water weight, you need your bone mass, you need your muscle mass. You need basically every tissue except for fat. So I really like to talk about fat loss and not about weight loss because when somebody comes to me and they're like, yo, I need to lose 20 pounds as fast as possible. How can I do it? I say, cut off an arm. As fast as possible. You didn't define fat loss. You defined weight. Yeah, I mean, weight is weight. Is weight. It's not specific. Weight loss is not helpful. Fat loss is helpful if you're trying to get healthier, leaner, better looking, more shredded, whatever. But some people don't need to lose any fat at all. If you're within a normal BMI, you do not need to lose fat. You might want to lose fat if you're like competing in bodybuilding, but to feel better, or they say like, oh, if your weight is on your stomach, if all of your excess weight is around the belly, then mm, so unhealthy, yeah. It's like brown fat, white fat. They start to categorize fat and say it's less healthy if it ends up being on a certain body part than another body part. I guess we're rolling into uh, the point number four is like the fitness industry. Then, okay, if we start talking fat mass, they start to categorize the fat and then how to lose a certain type of fat in a certain area. Your body decides where it's going to lose fat based on genetics, like we have discussed in point number two. And knowing what type of fat that is, is not helpful to being healthier at all. Like, what are you going to do with this information? All you can do is train being calorie deficit if you want to lose body fat. And that's it. Let your body do the rest. Recover well. Do remember that for women, if you're getting like below 15% body fat and for men below 10%, it's going to be harder to lose fat. And you might not need to. It might be not very healthy for you, actually. Like I've talked about this many times before. I lose my period before I see my six pack because I'm an apple shaped human. I lose my boobs. I lose like fat everywhere, but the stomach. My body is holding on to that in that area because it just wants to, and there is nothing I can do about it. So when I start seeing my abs, that usually means I am that lean that the body has lost the fat everywhere else. This is like the main place. My stomach is the main place where it's holding fat. There's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't mean I'm unhealthy. That doesn't mean if it's belly fat, then like I'm at a higher risk of heart disease, whatever. No. If I have a healthy body fat percentage for life, and if I'm training optimally, if I'm feeling great, who gives a damn where the fat is and like whether it looks like cellulite, whether I can see my abs? It's so secondary. It used to be like my crutch when I was younger. I just wanted to have a six pack and the rest of the body didn't matter. Thankfully, not like this anymore. Okay, the last point, um, that's actually what we were advised in a sales course that I took like way early in starting my fitness business. Um, we were advised to make up sciencey sounding terms 
that people won't really look up or understand and just make that like our signature thing, like muscle confusion and metabolic activation. And like it sounds sciencey, but you Google it and you're like, what the fuck is this? So we were advised, uh, clearly, a lot of other BS, but yeah, people actually did that. We were advised to come up with those things and like sell people your muscle confusion program because nobody else does that. Well, nobody else does that because it doesn't fucking exist. It's not possible. Can we just base things in real science that people can find and Google and verify and then be like, okay, you're legit. I'm going to you. There's no need to make up weird bullshit only to be the only one who sells weird bullshit. You don't want to be known as a person who sells weird bullshit. Why were we advised that? That is super weird. So yeah, you still can develop a signature program. Like I have my signature home uh, workout program with no equipment. Same thing for the gym and same thing for bodybuilding. I have three of my signature programs. There's nothing special about them. Every good coach can make his signature program for, I don't know, gaining muscle, um, getting shredded, etc. It doesn't mean they won't work. <laughs> and I don't need to sound sciencey without actually backing my stuff off that only will scare people that I want to work with. So that is super weird, but people who don't really look into this stuff, a lot of the times kind of buy into those terms of like, oh, this new way, the secret tip for, I don't know, getting rid of cellulite without any fat loss or without, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just brainstorming here, but yeah, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need a good program and good nutrition a good training program and good nutrition and maybe a coach to fix your technique. I think that's about it. At least I've been training like this for years and I'm very happy with my results. I know they're not going to be deceivingly fast. Uh, I'm not going to like add a hundred pounds on the barbell next month, but I train and I know that my body will do the rest. I recover, I eat well, and I try not to listen to whatever the new thing the fitness industry is trying to sell me. So yeah, how about you put some comments into what weird fitness industry bullshit you have seen that kind of sounds like half truth, but you start looking into it and you're like, okay, uh, that's definitely not a thing. So yeah, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, would like to make it to a thousand subscribers this month, if at all possible. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.